So our next reader, uh, J. Scott Brownlee, uh, just recently moved back to Austin, so we're excited to have him back um, in Texas. And um, I've, gotten, I've been able to bump into him a few times at all these different things, and I guess one of the, the things that's really cool about Austin, even though it seems kind of big, that uh, our poetry community is, uh, is pretty intimate to be able to, to see each other, and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I feel blessed about that. And, so, and I'm also glad that he's here, has been sending poems to Borderlands, um, and we've been very lucky to be able to publish them. And so uh, J. Scott Brownlee is a poet of place from Yano, Texas. His, work, his books include A Highway of Belief from Button, Ascension from Texas Review of Press, uh, Requiem for Used Ignition Cap from Orson Books, Orson Books. And I believe some of these are over here, at least a Requiem is over here at the local books um, kind of uh, kiosk, or whatever you might call that. Um, and uh, Requiem, which won the 2016 Bob Bush Memorial Award for Best First Book of Poetry from the Texas Institute of Letters, and on the occasion of the last old camp meeting in Eno County, Tree Life Books. Please welcome J. Scott Brown. Thank you all for coming out on a Sunday to listen to poetry. Um, this will be a three poem morning, uh, the only three poems. Um, and I'm going to read an old poem, a new poem, and the poem from Borderlands. I'm really excited to hear some new voices of Texas poets today that I haven't met yet. That's always fun. Um, Texans, I think, we aren't thought of as a poetic place, but I think we are. So. Um, I thought it would be it would be appropriate, given that we are kind of at the tail end, pun not intended, of deer season, that I would start with a deer poem. Uh, this is um, this is called Birthright, and if you if you're not familiar with bucks, whenever they're running and they're kind of battling it out for mating rights, sometimes their horns will get locked together, and they can't escape each other, and they'll die. And this is a poem, kind of a meditation on a moment. Um, related to that, so it's called Birthright. If you come upon two deer, as my father did, you will not forget seeing their antlers death locked and their muscular necks spiraling to the grass and then back up again to the work of running. He learned nature's struggle can be this ironic. One buck wants to cancel his opponent's offspring and the other will die before kneeling to him. Each will kill his brother for a doe's affection every hunting season. We are human this way in Texas and Judah. We will offer a glass of the coldest water to our enemy just so we can withdraw it and cause thirsting in him if our sons aren't granted a blood claim to the earth. These two bucks will both die from their entanglement no matter how much they wound each other in the clearing where my father trips over them and is stabbed twice nearly. He decides to shoot them for their brute stubbornness, taking aim at their hearts with a camo arrow. He notches, breathes, releases, then continues into the cedars. They are so close together, one piece of metal is enough to pass through and between both of them. Covenant of razors filed to a bright point fit to carbon fiber. Their birthright is blood bled, not the land beneath it. The coyotes who break their skin minutes later gnash their teeth and trade flesh without showing a bit of appreciation for just how clean a kill can be, how necessary cruelty is, wrestling with cruelty. And then I'll read you a, a brand new poem. I think that um, it's always fun to try things out and I, I, I always make the, the kind of the side that I wouldn't read you something that, that is just brand new because that's kind of offensive. Like here's this thing I made yesterday, but this is what I've been working on for a while, and it's called Usable Fields, and I'm really interested in place, um, as you probably figured from the bio, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out what it means to be a liberal rural white male in an era in which that's, a, that's kind of a strange thing to be, in a good way. Um, so this is kind of about legacy, family, whiteness, maleness, and, and trying to make sense of that. It's called Usable Fields. A summer cedar stack swarming with black widows requires fire to disinfect it. I learned a ditch 
was my birthright 10 years after graduation. I've inherited these fields, mesquite and ruin, as the drought squeezes us, but have not forgotten the cicadas refrain or their crisp brown molting like a string of foreskins. What in a place renders us its owners? My great grandfather bought several thousand acres, but was buried near them rather than beneath them. I have stopped believing in the word possession, synonym for cruelty. Imagine barbed wire choking a ram each time you consider the word's definition. I remember the ashes my father once left in our freezer, which turned out to be his sister's, and the way in the South, when you say a man's first name, you say his last name, Davis, Lee, Jackson, Johnston, Beauregard, or Forrest. Not all Texans cried secession. The majority did, a point overlooked here. Burnett County leaned pro-Union throughout the war, but the battles between Comanches and white settlers lasted decades. For every field we invade, we ignore someone else's tilling. History simplified. Each piece of flint struck to flint has brought friction and grief and fire. What I'm trying to say is black widows invading a seer stack aren't all that different from us. They will kill their own kind for a chance, albeit a brief one, to flourish. And I'll just read one more poem. This is from Borderlands. And um, really was excited to meet Ryan for the first time in person last year at the Round Top Poetry Festival. Has anyone been to the Round Top Poetry Festival? Yeah, it's fantastic. You should go this year. Actually, the book I'm buying from Malvern, which you should also buy books, is by Javier Zamora called Unaccompanied. He's going to be a faculty there. He's an old friend of mine. Awesome book. Awesome poet. That's only one of the poets that's going to be teaching there. It's going to be great. You should check that out. And uh, yeah, I'll just close out with this poem from, from Borderlands. It's called Friday Night Metaphysics. And if you, if you know your, your, uh, your New Testament, uh, you, you probably have heard that Jesus was around 33 years old when he was crucified. And so this poem has 33 lines, which are numbered. It doesn't really matter when you hear it aloud, but I wanted to kind of show you that. I'm from a very religious place. And so that writing poems about that place, you couldn't not include that kind of religious um, kind of myth making. Friday night metaphysics. <clears throat> One, why the starter is shot on my shit Chevy truck. Two, why the keg seems a stand in for Bacchus's blood at this pasture party. Three, why my tailgate becomes a sculptor's pedestal with you draped across it. Four, why our bodies forget chiseling at our flesh abstinence's purpose. Five, while there is no forgiveness, we can sing in the key of rust here. Six, while our sins seem to rise up like Sunday music. Seven, while our folks cast their votes for blue bloods, the wealthy, without second guesses. Eight, while our youth is endless, a space stripped and voided. Nine, why it is not portrayed as a deep, clear blueness asking nothing from us. 10. Why the dog in the ditch is both dead and breathing. 11. Why the ditch is, though muddy, a welcome presence. 12. Why the dog has a grasshopper sitting on him. 13. Why the grasshopper's nickname is Nicodemus. 14. Why I can't tell you where we are going with this. 15, why the avant-garde fails each time it refuses. 16, why it does or doesn't and the stars drift toward it. 17, why they dim at the end of days arbiterless. 18, why we feel now an emptiness passing through us. 19, why we praise between bud lights our drunken muses. 20, why each kiss is a pasture our dear selves step from. 21, why we want, though we can't, to escape our physics. 22, why we sing to the night of time's bodilessness. 23, why the night is a gate we are meant to step through. 24, 
why sunrise in Texas is a deep blue presence. 25, why we hold up a knife to it, realizing this. 26, why reflected in it is a sphere white and split. 27, why we realize the moon is our own failed whiteness. 28, why we lie in this field like two trophies gutted. 29, while we stand up and see senior year beneath us. 30, while we spend 40 weekends at this same party. 31, while the devil's temptations, sweet Jesus, saved us. 32, while we rule 13 counties of dirt and cactus. 33, why our crowns weigh nothing. Thank you. Mm -hmm.